Thanks to our today's sponsor, Yola, more on this later. Living alone gives you lots of peace, flexibility, and freedom, and do whatever you want. You don't need to listen to the nagging from the family. All these are great, but it comes with a price. The price is that you need to be super independent. You are the one and the only one in this household. That means you are the boss and also the handyman or handywoman. You have to do everything and anything it takes to live your life. In this video, I want to share with you these challenges living alone and most importantly, some of the useful tips on how I deal with them, especially for those who live alone or potentially consider living alone in the future. What I'm hoping from you is to stay until the end of this video because if you drop out early it will hurt my YouTube algorithm so thank you the first major challenge is that you are a one-man show like I said if you live alone you are the boss and also the handyman or handywoman I'm assembling all of this by myself I'm not hiring anyone to assemble for me. So recently I moved into my new apartment in Singapore. It's been so difficult for me to do all the physical work from lifting heavy things from the floor up to assembling furniture to some minor renovation like touching up the wall with some fresh paints. Firstly, you constantly have a lot of grocery shopping, especially if you buy drinks like box of water bottle or cans of Cokes, or even just unpacking or moving heavy things every week. For a guy living alone, this may be easier, but for a lady, it's actually quite challenging. So what to do? Tip number one, order heavy stuff online. Instead of going to supermarkets or shop, I try to order from online as much as possible. Sometimes I may go out to buy small things like the veggies and fruits, but definitely not for heavy drinks or household items. Even for a laundry hanger, I also order online. Once it's delivered, I assemble everything by myself. I thought it's still better than carrying heavy stuff up and down. But once the heavy items arrive home, you still need to lift them to the closet or a higher level. So tip number two is that make sure to learn certain physical skills. So for example, engage your core when you lift things up and squeeze your arms into your body. Don't just lift up with your arm because that will easily break your back. Tip number three is to read instructions and do acknowledge that mistakes happen all the time. I personally don't know how to assemble furniture, but most of this furniture you order online comes with some sort of instruction sheet that tells you this now goes into this piece A and that now goes into piece B and things like that. So this is the instruction that tells you I need to get the A and B first with A and B and I need the long nail goes to A and B. When I was not familiar with such instruction, it took me forever to really understand what they meant. So I make tons of tons of mistakes. Got my first nail in finally. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good with this. First time I assembled this corner table, I spent 40 minutes to just learn how to fix the leg onto the countertop. But after all the works, I realized I flipped the whole countertop upside down. Oh jeez! I found that I got this upside down. This is supposed to be the top, this is the bottom. So now I need to take it out. Jeez! So I had to unscrew everything and start from scratch. It's just difficult to live alone and have to learn so many things. You need to see how to tuck it in. But when you really make it in the end, you feel super accomplished. Tip number four, Google is your best teacher. There are a lot of things that I didn't know, so I just Google. In fact, I mostly use Google for solving problems. For example, when I moved in, I found the washer was making a lot of noises. So I tried to figure out why, whether or not it's a simple problem like something just stuck in the drum, or is it something more complicated. In the end of the day, I was not able to follow those instructions because there was more than one simple problem. For example, motor problem, so I have to find an engineer to help. 
But in general, YouTube is a very good go-to teacher for many DIY stuff. Number five, ask friends. When I first bought paints to touch up my wall, I consulted with a friend like what brush I need, what tray I need, what kind of paints, where to buy, and etc. Then I saw how people use those brushes and learned to do it by myself. Ask your friends to help if you're not sure about something and that's what friends are there for. Tip number six, hire a contractor. Of course, you can also hire a contractor to do things for you, but growing up in the US, we don't have such culture of always relying on other people. Most of the American households are DIY for their homes. This way, it also saves you money if it's not too difficult to do. But of course, if it's too difficult, maybe your hourly rate is worth a lot more, then it also makes sense to hire a contractor. Not only do I save some costs, since I already spent quite a lot relocating from the US to Singapore lately, but I can also learn some skill set that my school or workplace never taught me. Living alone is not easy. If your family is in a different country, it's even more difficult. How important it is to keep in touch with your loved ones, especially during the COVID-19 time when we can't travel to meet them. Fortunately, I found a great app, Yola, to help me. With Yola, you can call international mobile or landlines at affordable rates. Unlike calling through WhatsApp and FaceTime, your friends and family don't need internet connections, so the call quality is more reliable, and your phone number is always shown to them so they know who is calling. Their calling rates are one of the best on the market. If you want to try it out, you can get 15% bonus credit using my promo code Crazy Koala. I'll link it in the description box below. Happy Yola, happy calling! The second major challenge is inefficiency due to lack of coordination. Some tests do require human coordination. I guess that's how society exists in a way that humans form different community within themselves. In the case of living alone, if no one coordinates with you, then you need to coordinate with yourself. Let's take some specific example below. I was assembling the Zenith corner table, combining the legs and countertop, but without someone holding the countertop for me, it's so difficult for me to stabilize the position of the legs using nails or other tools. As I assemble this by myself, the countertop and the legs keep moving towards different direction. And sometimes I need to measure different dimensions of the room to figure out how to set up furniture. But since I live alone, I cannot do the entire measurement in one shot. Examples like this show that living alone creates lots of efficiency in life in many cases, but it doesn't always do the same, and it doesn't mean that it's not possible to get it done. For example, I ended up spending one and a half hour finish assembling this tiny table. I feel really accomplished guys. What do you think? So my tips on how to overcome this kind of inefficiency are below. Firstly, be flexible when you run into challenges. I didn't know how to stabilize the table when I was assembling it, so I turned the table into different angles, upside down, sideways, using my legs to hold them. I really tried everything I could think of to make it not moving. In the end, one of the ways would definitely work. Okay, I'm done break the whole thing down into multiple segments. Like I actually break down the measurement into twice to complete it. Once I finish the first part, I use my fingers to create an invisible mark to memorize where you got to. Then continue the next segment. Take a break and care for your body. When I start working on something, I become very focused and always forget the timing. And also, I got very bothered if I see things not tidy or dirty or disorganized. So when I received delivery on 9 p.m. on a Friday night, I couldn't help, but I wanted to finish everything at one go. But because no one was helping me, in the end, it made myself super tired working throughout midnight, and my efficiency was totally not good. I think when we are living by ourselves, we need to learn to take care of our body and care for our stresses and well-being, which many of us are not paying attention to. We need to learn to take a break so that we can actually work more efficiently when we feel better. I had more elaboration on this topic in one of my previous videos where I talked about how to manage stresses. If you are interested in, please go take a look.
I'll share our living alone experiences. If you don't live alone now, how was your previous living alone experiences? Do you like living alone more or do you like living with family or housemate? Do share your thoughts and experiences in the comment section. I hope these tips are helpful to you and do give a thumb up and subscribe. Please do share this video with people who maybe benefit from it. I do have a lot of similar videos in the personal development and minimalism playlist, so do check them out. If I can be helpful to you, do join my coaching at kksuccess.com and see you at the comment section.